Hi, welcome to the very first episode of Moog's Book Talk, where I am Moog and I talk about books. <laughs> so if you've been here for a while, you will know that I have a million hobbies and I want to make content about all of the hobbies. And I've been talking a lot about making book related stuff. So here we are. I still need to decide what exactly I'm going to do with the book stuff, but I'm going to do these little monthly videos where I talk about what I read in the previous month and what I thought of each of the things that I read. So whilst it's nearly the middle of November, I will be talking about the five books that I read in October of 2023. There is a bit of an interesting variety here, so there might be something in there that you'll enjoy. I also tried audiobooks for the first time as Spotify included them in their subscription. And actually it was really interesting. I like listening to them to fall asleep. It's actually quite nice, especially when the person reading it has a nice voice. <laughs> so the first book that I read in October or listened to because it was an audiobook uh, was Johannes Radebe's autobiography. If you don't know, Johannes is a professional dancer on Strictly Come Dancing, which if you're familiar with Dancing with the Stars, it's basically the UK's equivalent of that. Like I said about audiobooks, it's really great when the narrator has a nice voice. Uh, Johannes has a very soothing voice, so it's really great to listen to. And I thought his story was really interesting because it's about, you know, him growing up as a queer child in South Africa and his experience as he grew up and got into dancing and started things in different countries and how he, you know, inevitably ended up in the UK doing Strictly. And I thought that that was really interesting. This is probably a book that you wouldn't be into if you don't like Strictly, but on the off chance that you do, I would highly recommend it because it was just a really fascinating book to me. We are next going to talk about the one manga volume that I read, which was right at the end of the month. Uh, I read the first volume, finally, of Land of the Lustrous, also known as Hoseki no Kuni. It's something that I've been meaning to get to for such a long time because it really sounds like my vibe. It is about these anthropomorphic gems and they're on this barren planet and they all have different roles assigned to them and you can't really get a lot of the story just from one volume but i am definitely going to read more because i'm super intrigued i also think that the art style is gorgeous and i have seen a few panels from later on in the story that i'm not going to show because they're probably spoilery but I don't know the context of them and I'm super intrigued. It seems like things get pretty weird later on. I'm excited. I'm also gonna watch the anime at some point once I've read a decent amount of the manga. I gave this one 4.5 stars on Storygraph just because like most first manga volumes, it spends a lot of time establishing things. So I'm sure as we move along in the story, it will probably end up with higher ratings than that, I'm sure. Okay, so thirdly, we have the first fiction audiobook that I've listened to, which is Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. I want to give a disclaimer on this one, as the author's had a bit of controversy recently based on things that she said about current world events, um, which I'm not going to go into, but I am going to say that I recommend researching that before you decide whether or not to support her as an author and I did not know about said controversies when I read it or listened to it. And also because of that, I don't feel comfortable talking about it for a super long time because I don't really want to fully endorse it. So I'm just gonna go quite quickly with this one. I was quite curious about it because I am very much a fantasy girly and it has just been a massive book release. For those who don't know, I work at a bookshop and it's just been flying off the shelves for real. <laughs> Um, so I was curious. I'm not really a romance person, to be honest. I was expecting not to like those aspects of it. And yeah, that is very much the case. By the end of it, I thought that it was okay. I gave it three stars in the end. Um, I am intrigued to see what else happens in the story and like the series. But ultimately, there were a lot of things that I didn't really enjoy. Um, the protagonist felt a bit Mary Sue like at times the disability rep that it claims to have is in my opinion not very good I'm not gonna lie I feel like this book also would have been much better if they just didn't have any of the spicy elements and just wrote it as a YA because it very much reads like a YA so then when talking about sexual content comes up it feels really out of place like it almost reads like a Wattpad story I'm not gonna lie 
but I will acknowledge that that might partially be because I don't really like spicy content in books. I did skip the real explicit scenes, so that might just be down to personal preference, but yeah, I would keep that in mind. Editing Moog here, I have found out in my research that the author of this book was actually raised Mormon, so that possibly explains why a lot of the explicit content is written like it's from someone that's just learnt about sex. Like, it is very much giving Wattpad energy, like I said. Just thought that might be interesting to know. So long story short, I wasn't obsessed with it like a lot of people are. I, I thought it was okay, and I might check out the second one. I'm not sure. I haven't decided yet. The author's reputation has kind of put me off. We'll see. We'll see. The fourth book I read in October was The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. This one has been on my pile for so long. Pretty much since I started reading again in 2021 because I love The Hunger Games and I just had to stop procrastinating reading it because obviously the film is coming out very soon and I am so excited. I really love the original trilogy and it's just such an interesting world and yeah I really enjoyed this book as well. The only thing that stopped me from giving it a higher score, which I think I've heard other people say before, is that I feel like the third act of the book wasn't quite as strong as the other two. I still thought it was really good, don't get me wrong. I loved seeing such a like early point of the Hunger Games being developed. Like initially I thought, do we need a Snow origin story? But it was less about that because I was worried about it trying to like redeem him with a romance, which luckily it did not at all. Do not worry about that. Um, but it was a really interesting thing seeing them develop the games more from like this thing that nobody really cared about to it being the big deal that it is in the original books. I really recommend this one. Read The Hunger Games, read this, and the films are really good too, but the books are just so much more. You know, there's so much more detail in them. I can't wait to watch the film. I would love for Suzanne Collins to write more. I would understand if she didn't, of course. But there's just so many stories that can be told in this world. You know, you could pick from like different time periods and it's just really interesting. I don't think that there needs to be a Hunger Games sequel. There's so many different things you could do for prequels. And yeah, I'm just, I'm intrigued as to whether or not there's going to be any more. TLDR, I really like this one. Very good. Excellent. Editing Moog here again. I have seen the film since recording this and I thought it was great, but if you are going to watch it, I highly recommend reading the book first because there are a lot of details that weren't in the film that are really important, but it was still a great film, so highly recommend. And lastly, we have The Woman in Me, which is the Britney Spears autobiography. This is one that I have been really excited for and one that I've talked a lot about at my job when customers have been buying it. I'm like, yes, I'm so excited for this. Um, it feels weird to talk about this one in like a review aspect and like giving it a rating and such just because it is such a personal story. You know, it's something that happened in real life and something that is very much not pleasant. I would also keep that in mind if you're going to read it. Like some of the stuff in here is pretty fucked up um, and could potentially be quite upsetting. So just be cautious uh, going into it if that is something that is of a concern to you as a reader. Again, I listened to the audiobook of this one and it was just so great. I actually, I feel like a lot of people probably won't like the fact that it was so short, um, but I actually quite enjoyed that because it was just, especially after the past two books I read, which were big chunky books, or relatively chunky for me anyway, um, it was nice to have something that felt a bit more approachable, you know, with short chapters and was it was easy to get into which I think is also good for the average consumer as well. I can see why this book has had a lot of mainstream commercial success as well. I am very much a 2000s girly. I love a bit of Britney. Um, Hit Me Baby One More Time is the song that was number one in the UK on the day I was born. So, you know, I was always a Britney stan from birth. <laughs> uh, but yes, it is fascinating. Um, it is a very interesting read. I highly recommend it. It's really great to finally hear about these things in Britney's own voice from her own perspective because there's been so much talk about it and also a lot of the big stuff like when she shaved her head for example 
I remembered from when I was young, but I was so young when it happened that I didn't really understand why she did it. So hearing about those things now as an adult was also really interesting as well. Also her family sucks, like for real. It's like that one Wendy Williams clip is pretty much how I feel about it. How dare you, Mr. Spears, you had me fooled. And you too, Mrs. Spears, death to all of them. Oh. So those are the five books that I read in October. This might have been a bit of a short video, mainly because I have not done this before. I'm very much still working out the format. So please forgive me if that is the case. I know a lot of people are really in depth when they're talking about books and I'm still kind of learning to do that. I'm not used to it yet. <laughs> and I hope that this is something that you enjoyed, whether you normally watch book videos and you've stumbled across mine or you normally watch my other things and you have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Either way, I appreciate you very much. I definitely want to make more book videos, so look out for those and look out for my other things as well. And yes, thank you very much for being here and I will see you whenever I next see you. Bye bye.